welcome to Conquering Mouse Scrap Room with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today, today is Free Pattern Friday. Yes, it's Free Pattern Friday. I just love Free Pattern Friday. I give away patterns, free patterns on Mondays, Thursdays as well, but Free Pattern Fridays is just a whole lot more fun. I don't know why, but it is. So, you're probably wondering what in heaven's name are you going to do with coffee filters in your sewing room? Well, I'm going to show you in a minute, but first, I want you to check out somebody called Dee Dee Maker. She's a really active member in our Facebook group and she has a little YouTube channel and she talks about her cutest dog ever. I just, you know, it's just cute and adorable little videos that she's doing. We also have a Facebook group. Both of those, Dee Dee Maker and the Facebook group will be in the show notes below. But this is what we're going to do today. We are going to do bubble blocks with coffee filters. So come on in, let's get to this sewing. Okay, so here's my coffee filter. Basically, you're, I need something to give me a gauge. If you can sew these without, without needing a gauge as to what you need to do or how many, how big it needs to be, you know, the good for you, <laughs> I can't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm first off, I'm gonna lay a strip down and on top, and this is just traditional paper or like string piecing, but you're going to have just a little bit more fun with this. Now, what I have done is I decided I was going to try and make them as eclectic as possible. And this is not my original design. My, my friend showed me her bubble blocks and her bubble blocks are crumb pieces. And I thought, well, that was such a cool, fun idea. I thought, I gotta share this. But of course, knowing me, I need to make it mine. So what I've decided to do is I have decided I'm going to create just a little bit of a different aesthetic. So the bubble blocks, now we're coming up to Curve Boot Camp right away. So my intention is I'm gonna use as many of these bubble blocks as I can in our curved piecing when we do that. So I thought, okay, well, I've got lots and lots of strings and I probably need to address them because they no longer all fit into the box. So what I did is I decided, okay, I'm sorting out the blue, black, green, you know, that kind of thing into color families. And then we would, we would just move along and get some of this done. Now, I just finger press, right? When I'm doing this, I just, I go along and finger press. Before I started my YouTube channel, I was able to do a hundred string blocks a, a month. And that was, didn't matter what size they were, or what, you know, what I was doing with them or whatever. And I would make them into something, whether I would make them into, you know, four and a half inch squares or whatever, that, you know, it kept, it kept those strings under control for all the sewing I was doing. And I would occasionally do a mixed bag of strings and, you know, I'd have fun that way too, but I am finding now that I am just not getting to back to my string blocks anymore. So I'm going to put this one in the strings and free pattern Friday playlist. So I have, and I've got some really fun neutrals in there because otherwise your blocks get too dark. Right, so the neutrals I picked to go in here, the low volume, they're whiter cream background, and they've got some color reflected in the, the string family. Right, so these are all blues that are here, so that works. I just put, you know, like one, one ring, one or two through, but the bubble blocks are easiest to make when you're doing two at a time. Any string block actually is easiest to make when you're doing two at a time, right? And if you're like me and you have to use paper, that's fine too. It's okay. Nobody, nobody needs to say anything about you need a paper to do a round block or a square block. Oops, I need to get that down a bit. There we go. And anything that's shorter, I hold to the side 
and or it's too short to go right across. I hold to the side and I make um, blocks out of it later. But you get a really good eclectic mix and they don't take long. I forget how many I made at one of the so dates there that I host and it was just like they were just coming out so quick and so they look great you know but anyways we will be using these bubble blocks and I get rid of this right away too because I don't want that in my cult um, they do we will be using bubble blocks for our uh, curve boot camp so if you wanted to join me on this you can, but this does give a very modern, a fun look to string block, right? And I pull my threads out as we go. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. Let's get this one done. There. And I have some longer pieces that I hold to the side, but you know, try and vary your string size. It makes your block a little more interesting, you know, but. Things that aren't big enough to go across, I just cut off and put to the side for now. And there. Uh, and you want like sometimes you want bigger chunks on the side that that go to the edge here because you are going to be trimming this back to a curve. Here's a short one, a shorter one, and I just work with my strings on my lap, right? That way it, you know, they don't have to, you don't have to have a great big pile falling over every time you look at it funny. And, okay, there, I'm going to think I can start using some of the longer stuff, or the shorter stuff. I find to get through a lot of strings very quickly this way. And when you're string quilting something like this, it's more about where does it fit. Like this piece doesn't fit. Right? So you'd quickly move on to the next piece, which would be like this piece. Oh, that piece fits. That works great. And it's lovely. And it's kind of a different color. It's a different width. You know, it's good. Uh. There we go. And let's see if that one, oh, that one's got already on there. Let's see if I can use this. Nope, too short. Too short, too short. Oh, well. Ooh, this works. This is a nice navy. Oh, it's still too short. Oh, no. <laughs> Sometimes it's about, and don't sit there and it's about what fits, not what will work and if I have to go to a bigger piece we have to go to a bigger piece that's fine there we'll just go to a longer piece we'll get past the arguing just by putting a rather more eclectic colorful one in there we go there. and the piece is so short I'll use it over here well, the best part about this is you pick it up and it works or it doesn't. That's it, you know. Like I say, I have a bunch of it on my lap. And when it no longer works, as a blue, like this here end, is kind of a corally pink thing going on. And you just cut it off and that is too small. I throw that out. Or I don't throw it out. I put it into a pet bed. But... Okay, well, let's get to the next one. Oh, that, that's too long. No, now it's too long. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. I'm going to put that right there. That's kind of a, a very pale blue. There. There we go. Now, let's get some more colors on here. There. And you just quickly check to see which side is the brighter color. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but the bubble idea is just really cute. Um, I love the idea of inset portholes in a quilt. So with these, you can either applique them or put them in as a porthole or, you know, anything pretty much that you like, you know. So it works. Everything works. Okay. Just rough trim it. You don't have to. You don't have to get crazy. I'm, my sewing room right now is drowning in blue springs, so I don't have to worry much about this at all. Ooh, I'm going to put. Does this fit? No, it's too small. Does this fit? Yes, and it's a little long, but it'll work. This is pretty, eh? It's nice and bossed. Sometimes you just gotta get your shiny stuff out. And I'm some of the stuff that's in the blue string bin, I that is the last of the fabric that I have of that fabric. So it's kind of nice to see it go, but at the same time, you sit there and wow, it was so nice when I did this. It was so nice when I did that. You know, but anyways, so see here now this is covered. It's covered perfectly with a really pretty blue and white with little yellow bits. And I'm not gonna put that there. Oh, I'm gonna put this on. This is cool. And I keep that selvage out of these blocks best I can. The selvage shrinks at a different rate. So I don't want this stuff, you know, bubbling and whatnot, so. we go. That's kind of nice. So that's big enough for something else. Okay. Now, let's, I think I'm done this one. Pretty much. Uh, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. This is good. This works. It's kind of a slate, slate color up against this. And I can show you what the back of it looks like. Okay, let's get one more. Let's see if that's big enough. Not quite. Okay, what about that? Oh, that's I've already been used. That hasn't been used. Oh, never mind. We'll do this instead. We will just put something down and make it work coffee bean fabric from the coffee bean quilt or the coffee quilt or coffee quilt so long from last year okay and show you what this one looks like from behind now all I have done is finger press this I would make sure I gave it a really good press but this now you can sit there and trim it off or use a circle cutter or whatever and once once it's put in a circle into cut it clipped into a circle you can now use it as a applique like you put an applique piece on it or you can you know flip it over so then you can just you know top stitch it down to a square or you can insert it as a porthole or whatever these coffee filters measure seven and three quarters seven and three quarters so I would be probably cutting mine down to seven and a half so I would have a little bit of paper going off but that's not a problem if you wanted to, because these things are hanging over the edge, you could make it into an eight inch. So let me just finish up and we'll get to our ta-da moment. So here we are. This is uh, 
this is kind of where we're at with this. And like I say, they do, they finish up really quick. Now you can sit there, you can hand trim them so they're all the same size as your coffee filter, or you can trim them down to, let's say, seven and a half. When you're doing a portal method, right, the circle is one size, the portal is one size smaller, right, one inch smaller. So if I cut these down to seven and a half, that means I'm putting them into a six and a half inch hole in a square block. Right, so depending on what your coffee filters are, you know, like how high your, your coffee filters go or whatever, you have to look at the coffee filters that are available for you. When we bought our coffee filters, we bought them at a dollar store. I got 400 for, I forget how much money did we, was like a buck. So, I mean, it's tea paper. It's tea bag paper. It's so fine. This is going to come off in a heartbeat. Like, and I was... It's, it stayed on well enough without ripping, you know, when you do this. Now, when you're doing this, you're also shortening your stitch length on your sewing machine too, right? And you can use pretty much whatever thread you want. But this goes together. This is kind of cute. The ones that uh, my friend did, Marie did, she did hers all with crumb blocks. And then whatever she cut off, she put into another crumb block. So hers are very eclectic, very wonderful. And then she put them all into a quilt, and the bubbles were not necessary. I can't remember now if there was one there that was not centered. All the blocks were not centered, so the bubbles were all, you know, they weren't in a perfect line. And I can't remember if she did that one or if she did the one where they were all perfect, you know, in the middle of the, of the block. But that's all up to you. I'm going to leave that up to your creativity. So, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week ahead. Okay, you take care and say bye! My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now and that Facebook group is got some very, very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know, posting pictures and commenting and it's, it's been a lot of fun. And the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early. So you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next. After the nosegay sew along, we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away. So we'll get to sewing those curves, and it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of, it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on. But we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and and letting them know that you kind of like our channel that that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.